what the hell was that? <laughs> How did we win that game? It's a Steelers Ravens game. I mean, we said it last week. It, you knew it was going to be close. It was close. It was a Ravens Steelers score. It had Ravens Steelers things. Uh, by things, I mean drop passes, crazy calls. Uh, Gunner had a fumble that really kind of was his own teammate's fault. I mean, it had every every making of a Steeler Ravens classic. Um, just did it. Just did. And uh, I mean, it was fun. It was a little antagonizing at times, or agonizing at times. But uh, here we sit, three and two in first place, which boggles my mind. Yeah, uh, the anatomy of a Steelers game is before you're before the game. It's like, oh, this could be interesting. We'll see what happens during the game. You, it's you just like want to, you you just want to jump off a bridge or something like that. And then at the end of the game, it's like, oh, hey, we won. Yeah. Oh, right. okay. We won. Uh, unbelievable. Just that, that was the most Steelers Ravens game ever. I know Steelers Ravens <laughs> games are crazy, but that was the most Steve. That was the most Steeler Raver Raven Riffic thing ever. Um, 100%. my goodness, my goodness. Um, 100%. Um, I'm just, I'm, you know what? I'm just going to recap the game and whatever, whatever happens, happens. Um, what basically the first quarter was Baltimore having their way with the Steelers, or the, at least the Baltimore offense. They were just driving down the field. And of course the Steelers doing nothing and they open with a touchdown, uh, which makes it look so easy within the first like three minutes of the game, like, great, here we go. This is going to be, because we all predicted, we all predicted either low score or the Steelers are going to get blown out. And it's like, oh, crap. It's going to be a yeah. blowout. Great. Just the way this season's been going is one of those things where, okay, it's going to be close, 19, 16, 20 to 17 type of thing, or they're going to get rolled uh, like they did in Houston. And in the first quarter, honestly, they got a little lucky. You tweeted about it. I think a lot of people did. I, I mean, they're lucky some passes were dropped. You know, that one, Zay Flowers, if he catches that one pass in the first quarter, he's he's walking in the end zone. Um, and, you know, it just – they got a little lucky in the first quarter because they gave up 143 yards, didn't look very good. Uh, and you kind of thought this this might not go very well. But then, you know, Highsmith and Watt and the defense started showing up in the second quarter, and they were really pretty tough from there on out. Uh, and I, I think it really made a difference in the game because, by the way, uh, towards the end of the game, this guy that, you know, according to Terrell Austin, doesn't deserve to start. Uh, Joey Porter Jr. had an interception in, in a good one covering a very fast receiver. He did very good coverage to do that. Uh, he did textbook, turn around, spot the ball, pick the ball off. Uh, it was a big play, huge play, arguably the best impressive play of the, of the, of the afternoon by the defense. And maybe now. I think he's ready. I mean, please, please start him, please. <laughs> Jeez. Oh my God, my God. I, 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 I saw numbers, and I don't know yeah. whether this is true or not, but the quarterback rating when throwing to Joey Porter Jr. is like twenty-seven or something like that. Like, yeah. like, like, like he he does not allow anything. Um, yeah, but yeah, let's say... go ahead. No, I was going to say, I want to say what pro football forecast rating was because it was so high, but then, you know, T.J. Watt was like, you know, 30 points lower than what he should have been, so I'm not going to Right, right, right. I'm sure, I'm but sure. But no, he, he has been. He's been tough. He got a tough matchup. He got a tough assignment. He did very well. And, again, it's just, you know, it just boggles my mind that Terrell Austin can sit there, and I'm sure it's more Mike Tomlin making a call in his Austin saying he's just not ready yet, not ready Hey, look, dude. Absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. He is ready. He yeah, is he is what? more than ready. My goodness. He's probably going to get burned sometime this year. He's going to give up a touchdown this year. He's going to make a mistake. Rookies do that. Remember Troy Palomalo is playing on special teams his rookie year. Right. Let him get out there and make some mistakes. You know what? If he does get burned, okay, we're not going to be happy at first, but that's how you learn. Let him learn. Yeah. Let him learn. There's no reason he should be sitting on the bench at all. Exactly. 
Now, let exactly. me get that off my chest. Now, now let's go wherever. <laughs> and now to continue with our regularly scheduled program. Yeah. Um, the big, so <laughs> Baltimore made it 10, nothing and they were driving again. Um, and a huge play. They do this little screen where this is exactly what Houston was doing last week too. They were taking advantage of the Steelers being so aggressive and and coming in so deep, and they just do a little little screen over everybody's head, boom, down the field. And Justice Hill is flying down the field, and then Larry Ogunjobi from the defensive line comes flying down with the most nastiest strip. You can see that coming. It looked like. like like a Hail Mary, a uh, Haymaker. <laughs> you know how Hulk Hogan used to hand his guys there and wind up his arm? You know, it, I mean, it was like, it's like and you know what? It remind me of another guy that used to do that, and that's Cam Hayward. So, you know. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, oh, I mean, Cam that's... Hayward. I've seen Cam Hayward like like go like 50 yards down the field to come after someone. And you know they're 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 following his lead. You know they were they saw him do that and said, yeah. So, the huge, great hustle play causes a fumble. Stops the drive, thank goodness, because at that point, Baltimore was just going down the field at will. So, um, Steelers get uh, seven plays, 26 yards, gets a field goal. It's 10 to three. Um, with uh, yeah, and then and then, uh, but there's still a couple minutes, there's still, uh, uh, there, there's still about three minutes left in the in the in the in the first half, and Baltimore is driving again, and At the time we all said the same thing. How stupid is Harbaugh? Either Harbaugh has no respect for us or Harbaugh is an idiot. You know who plays? You know who does stuff like that? The coach of the, the Chargers, Staley, who is an absolute idiot with stuff like that. But but anyway, so so it fails and they get no points. And think and, and we all think what an idiot Harbaugh is. Harbaugh didn't know that was that was their center. Right. Their center right. thought that. Quan Alexander and I I saw the play. Quan Alexander jumps in the neutral zone. And and the center thinks, ah, oh, free play. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if time runs out. You can't end the the the, the period on a on a uh, on a penalty. So we'll get it's all good. Well, Quan jumps back <laughs> before the play, before and, and is not in the neutral zone. So now it's an actual play. And Lamar Jackson's like, what the hell do I do with it? Like, what, what are we doing here? <laughs> Right. What yeah. what madness? What I, what an idiot. I don't think any of us like any of the Harbaugh's uh, the one up in Michigan or the one here and um but I honestly I had to say the one up in Michigan I think got the brains because it surprises <laughs> me with the Ravens talent that they have, you know, um he just does. You're right. He does dumb things like that. I'm sitting there thinking, what are you doing? Uh the announcers are saying, What are you doing? And, you know, it just, I mean, I don't know if you just get caught up in the moment. How, how do you not know that? Uh, it almost goes to right before we, we kicked off the podcast here with Miami. I mean, you have 34 seconds, uh, just kneel down on the ball. You know, I mean, yeah. it's, it's not rocket science. It's not, I don't care what exclamation you have. I've, I've never heard of a, of a, of a center basically quote unquote going into business for himself just deciding oh I, hey i'll yeah. snap the ball hey bro you know something it's a team game it's a team <laughs> game the quarterback calls the plays the quarterback gets a call from the coach calls the plays and you execute the plays not eh, i'm bored i think i'll snap the ball now yeah i got some slim jims in the rocker room yeah. i'm hungry let's go let's- Ah, we can, we can, we can no, uh, and look, and Mike Tomlin isn't exactly winning any championships on time clock management either. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> especially challenges. But yeah, that one uh, that one was just, again. And I, yeah, I think the first half was a little bit more of the Ravens shooting themselves in the foot, some drop passes, you know, the turnover. Because you're right. They go in there and they go up 17 to nothing. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it, I mean, it really, you know, I think last week at Houston, Joe, at that point, 
you could see the air was let out of Steelers' will there a little bit. And if they go down like that, because the entire game, <laughs> only Pittsburgh, the entire game that you, that you actually end up winning are the, is a, the crowd booing the offensive coordinator the whole time. The entire I mean, time. just booing, booing, and they're winning. And we called it. We called yeah. it. We knew that was going to happen. And it was, it was going to be – it's like, you know, we all said – uh, they this offense better do well because if they start this game with a three and out, you're gonna hear sixty five thousand people screaming "Fire Canada!" Yep, yep. And I was seeing, I was seeing more and more, like you see on social media, Facebook, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, Instagram, whatever. Not not, not LinkedIn, but uh, people with these creative Fire Canada signs. There's a guy A E A A W on a, on a wrestling show. They're a putting up Fire show. Canada signs. How funny Fire Canada that? signs. Uh, Could and you then, imagine the rest of the country saying? Why? Why? Why do we want to fire Canada? What did What did the, yeah, the nation yeah, of Canada, Canada ever do to us? Like, what is going right. on? We li- right. we like Brett the Hitman harder. What's going on? Right. Um, and you know, if you swing into that second half when they start doing what they're doing, they start coming back. The pressure's on. Watt and Highsmith are just they're teeing off, and you know they get get down there and and Kenny, who I thought was okay, I don't think he was great again. I think there's still some things he did wrong, but he did better. One thing he did right. That was a great pass. Goes to Pickens. Pickens takes it in, and they show. And I, I caught it immediately. They show the the team. Every all the boys are jumping up and down, and he just sits there emotionless. And I text or texted you or whatever right away, and I said, "That's very telling." That Matt Canada showed no emotion. I'm mean, here. You are. You're getting booed mercilessly from almost the kickoff all the way through now, and your guy just took your offense, just scored. Just put you up, your entire boys all around you, your staff just jumped out of their chairs and you didn't make a gesture, not a smile. And this is a guy, as much as we we harp on this guy, I told you at training camp, he's gregarious, he's smiling, he's energetic. The players, I think, fed off of that a lot. You always knew where he was because you could hear him. I mean, and that's a lot of guys around there. You could hear Matt Canada. And for him to sit there and kind of just, you know, so – to me, my, my, I have to believe either he's just emotionally spent, he's just had enough, his feelings are hurt, whatever you want to say, how you ever want to say it, or A, he knows he's getting axed this week. I don't know. But, I mean, just to see him, like, defeated like that or just emotionless, kind of just, you know, because at that point, second half, I felt that it swung back the Steelers' way, Joe. It, it, we were doing some defensive things. We are doing some things on offense that were okay. And you could feel us coming back into the game. We're clawing our way back. Uh, the Steelers are three and two, lead the division, just beat their arch rival. And the whole Canada reaction thing is almost a bigger story <laughs> than the actual game. That's all we're talking about is Matt Canada's reaction to that touchdown. And I thought <clears throat> at the time, I thought, Okay, it's probably not as big of a deal as I'm making it. But, yeah, apparently I think you said one of the first callers in the Bob Pompiani show. Yeah. Picked up on it. <clears throat> Media was talking about it. Pat McAfee talked about it today on the show. Everybody's talking about it. So, yeah, I guess maybe there is something there. But um, I, I, I yeah. can't imagine. I can't imagine for three hours hearing 65,000 people scream how you suck. Could you imagine? Yeah. Could you imagine if, if if Matt Canada showed up to your work and just booed you for three hours? You yeah, suck. No, no. You call that an email? You suck. <laughs> Boo. Fire, steel, fire. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I I don't know. I mean, Darren, it, it, I mean, Darren. <laughs> You know, could you imagine? Like, like I don't know. I don't. I, I don't know what. See, I to me, it's not that big of a deal because I, I would imagine coaches can't be that emotional because they have to think about the next play or the next sequence or the next scenario or something like that. So they're thinking about that. But that didn't look like that. That just looked like I don't know. I don't. I don't know what that expression was. It's like he was dead inside or something like that. That's what I mean. It was just like a, I mean, a smirk, a smile, something. I mean, it's just, like, I yeah, mean, like, yeah, we did it. Yeah. Like, yeah, I think he's just been, I don't know. And I don't blame him in a way, you know, I mean, yeah, I think I you're that, that has to suck. That has... I, no, I mean, I just, I just thought it was very telling, but yeah. um, no, you know, Jalen Warren got set, got hot there in the second half. Things started rolling for him a little bit. Uh, you know, he ended up bleeding, you know, nine carries, 40 yards to Najee's 14 carries for 37. 
Uh, and that, that leap over uh, the, the inside linebacker, forget his name. It's like, oh, man. You know, I mean, <laughs> just, there's like these signs, like we talked about in the preseason and before the first game. There's something there. It just, you know, it's just not coming together. It came together a little bit yesterday, I guess. But, um, you know, you called this a couple weeks ago. It's it's hurt them without Deontay Johnson. Uh, not yes. having Deontay. I mean, yeah, Allen, Rob- Allen Robinson got five passes yesterday, which is nice to see finally. I, I, I made a tweet. I forgot Miles Boykin was even on the team. Seriously? No, no insult against you, Miles Boykin. I just forgot you're on the team because, hell, I don't think you had anything thrown your way all year. I was looking like, who is that guy? Yeah. <laughs> um. Uh- I, I would like to. I was hoping Darnell Washington would get a little bit more when he dot yesterday, but you know, Muth being out. Well, that's another thing. They, they, they're missing yeah. Muth. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I mean, I, I don't know. I think the last couple of weeks, all the media and everything's been giving him an F on offense, probably deservedly so, definitely deservedly so in Houston. But yesterday, I kind of gave him a pass. I, you know, uh, at least C plus, B minus, they, they, they did what they needed to do to win. They're back um, to the point where they were at the end of last year. Cause this game was almost exactly like when they played in Baltimore last year. And, right. and also when they played against uh, the Raiders at the end of last year. Now that That's game was, that game was weird because that was the Franco, the Franco just died and that was the immaculate reception yep. game. So there was a lot of emotions there, but still this is, this is the, this is the blueprint. The, the defense is awesome. And the offense is terrible until the end, and then Kenny comes up with a clutch drive. You know, he's had 17 starts, and I think four or five of them have been game-winning drives in the fourth yeah. quarter. It's yeah, that's kind of what I mean. Yeah, like, just, uh, there's these things, that, like, there's a little bit here and a little bit here. We seem to pick it all together, no, no pun intended, and and put it put it in a total package. Because, again, you know, I mean, uh, he took three sacks yesterday. About two of them he didn't need to. He probably could have got rid of it. He's dropping his eyes a little bit. He ran into coverage twice um so just you know um and that that Kenny Pickett that I remember from Pitt um or even last year a little bit we we talked about this a little last week he's not he's not as assertive when he's running like he used to be yeah but Josh Long watched him uh, for breakfast you know against the Jaguars man when he runs he takes off and he has an idea where he's going and he has he runs with a purpose Kenny looks like he's running like <laughs> he's scared out there it, it, yeah <laughs> yeah reason. Kenny used to run <laughs> I mean, mm-hmm. we all remember the ACC championship game when he did the fake slide, but still, yeah. he could run when he wants to, and he was doing that a little bit in the Raiders game, and then and then he just stopped. And now it's like if he runs at all, it's a miracle because you know he still he has that knee injury or whatever. Yeah. Um. He needs help. He needs he needs to to work on this thing. I mean, it is a miracle that they are three and two, but they are basically three and two. Two of those wins were solely on the defense, well, and. Helps. They need they they got a lot to work on through for the bye. Yeah, through this bye week. I don't know. If, I don't know if anyone's planning on going to Disney, but they should probably cancel the plans. Yeah, yeah. No, no. They need to. They need to go back um, to the to work. And, and this whole thing to kind of break this morning about so Byron Leftwich has has reached out to them and they are you out of your minds telling him no? <laughs> you know what he's done. Do you remember what he did when he was here? I mean. He that's knows the organization. I, he knows yeah. he he knows Tomlin. He was he was a big part of. Uh, that that championship, I think, in two thousand nine. Uh, what does it hurt? Does it hurt to have another offensive mind? Does it hurt to just as somebody as a consultant, somebody to come in and say, "Oh yeah, you know, you you guys are doing this fine," or or what or what the hell are you people doing? This is, I mean, just somebody. Yeah, he brought Brian Flores in, which I thought was really great. I thought they yeah. did a great job. Um, and to this, why why wouldn't you bring him in? You know, I mean, and, and that's maybe Kenny could use that. I mean, here's a guy uh, that, you know, did did very well in the pros for himself in certain aspects. And uh, it, it seemed to be maybe even a better coach than he was a player. Um, so I just I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't get it. But uh, I say that's pride. It's pride. Because if you do that, you're basically admitting you have a problem. Yeah. That, and again, and, you know, because anytime anytime Tomlin is asked about it, he's like, "Oh, we, we just have to work on it or whatever." We're like, no, no, no. This is a big problem, dude. It's been a big problem for years now. Ever, ever, what thirty some games of the of the uh, of the Matt Canada regime, and uh, and it's still not looking great, good. So yeah, any any help would be nice. Yeah. Uh, so no, I, I think you're right about we're lucky because eight of those passes the Ravens dropped, uh, two were right in the end zone. I mean, 
I, I mean, and honestly, Lamar Jackson put him right where he needed to be. One, uh, one with yeah. Mark Andrews. I couldn't believe Mark Andrews dropped that ball. Uh, so, you know, it easily could have been, you know, 31 to 20, 10, 17 or whatever it was. Right. So, right. Um, the big play. So basically not much happened in the third quarter. Then the fourth quarter happens and all hell breaks loose at, uh, at 11, 12 of the fourth quarter, the, uh, the Baltimore is back on their own 14 yard line and the punter goes a punt and gets blocked by miles Killebrew. And it is so close to being a touchdown. Oh man, that would have been amazing if that was a touchdown. Cause at that point in me, and I'm sure a lot of people were saying is like, the only way we're winning this game is if we get another defensive touchdown, because we're not <laughs> offense is doing nothing. Yeah. Um, I've watched that block, that block punt so many times. Perfect timing. Yeah. Perfect timing to put his hand up. Amazing. Amazing. Tomlin called him like one of the best in the world at blocking punts or something like that. Like that was amazing. Um, so, but it turns out to be a safety. So now it's 10 to 5, which kind of sounds like the Orioles are playing playing the Pirates and uh and um and uh, what's his face is getting rocked or something like that. But uh, so now they, they, because it's a, uh, because it's a safety, they punt it and Gunnar Olszewski actually does a good return. Mm. And uh, the Steelers go down nine, nine plays, 49 yards. And with seven, 10, they make it 10 to eight. Okay. Uh, I thought for a minute, Gunnar was going to take that in. Yeah, yeah, it looked good. It looked good. good. It looked good. Yeah. Um. So then, uh, Baltimore gets it. They punt, and uh, what happened? What happened? This is uh okay. This is okay. Oh, so then, um. Oh, so Baltimore punts, and Gunner. So you say that Gunner, somebody hit Gunner on that? I forget the guy's name, but yeah, he came right over. If you watch it again, he gets clobbered by his own guy. Oh, and interesting. I mean, you could say Gunner fumbled again because Gunner does that. Um, but I really kind of feel like if he didn't get clobbered by his own guy, he maybe um, holds on to that ball. But I, I only watched it one more time because I was so angry, so I didn't pay attention. I'm like, my, yeah. my immediate thought was, Fire Mac Canada and fire Gunnar Olszewski. Get, get, get them both. I take them both to the airport. Right. Uh, okay. So, well, either way, it's a fumble. And now they're up 10 to 8 on the Pittsburgh 25. Best case scenario, we give up a field goal on its 13 to 8 and we live to fight. You know, and now it's like five minutes left in the game, but still we have a chance. Right. Worst case scenario, we get a they give up a, a they get a touchdown it's 17 to 8 basically game over there's no way Steelers are doing two scores in 5 minutes no way nope. so what happens it's an interception in the end zone Joey Porter Jr on Odell Beckham oh my goodness now now that one that one was on Lamar that was a poor throw but still throw. Joey Porter Jr just Perfectly covered that. Yeah, and, and I mean, was in perfect he's position. Junior. He's out there most of the second half. He's in Eldo Beckham's pocket the whole time. And like I said, poorly thrown ball, you're correct. But you know, JPZ did a great job getting turned around, spotting that ball, and made a clean interception. I mean, it was beautiful, it, which adds to the fact well, why the hell isn't he out there more? Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, you're right. Uh they're sitting at 25 yard line, Joe, and you're thinking the worst, they got the best field. Field goal kicker in the world over right. there, right? Already, um, in, already in range, already in range, and yeah, so yeah, it's just, uh, yep, couldn't have gone our way better that at that point. That crowd so, got back into it. I mean, yeah. it energized it, whole new life. Got got just entered into that stadium. Yep, everything is great, but they're still down ten to eight. So yep. now they got to drive to get a field goal or something like that. And well, they don't get a field goal. They get a touchdown. I forgot what what, what those things were. Yeah. Uh, 
it's a couple really nice. It wasn't just the 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 final you know big throw to Pickens, but he did have another a nice throw right before that of uh of twenty one yards to Pickens to take it to the um to the about the, to the about the Baltimore forty one and then a forty one yard pass to Pickens because Baltimore was blitzing and they had and they were dumb enough to have single coverage on Pickens who by the way. The one thing we've learned so far these five games, the dude is a star. The dude we basically have, if if Deontay is, is comes back right and he's good as he's he's supposed to be, the Steelers basically have two number one receivers now. I love it. Well, I, I love it too. Uh, but there's but. <laughs> this thing where you know, and let me go back to that play though too. You know, and also on that drive, Joe, there's a nice 23 yard pass to Jalen Warren. Uh, Jalen Warren had a nice day yesterday, caught three passes, ran for, you know, decent amount for a backup running back. Uh, and then to, Kenny made a great pass, but also George Pickens got some separation, which a lot of these guys haven't been able to get for whatever reason right. that right. helped Kenny out. Beautiful pass goes down, but you're right. Uh, you get Deontay, who's the better pass route runner of the two. Um, you know, I think he just naturally is the better, better route runner of the two uh, because yeah, Miles Austin hardly got much of a look. Allen Robinson caught, I think, five or six passes yesterday. So, yeah, but that, that was a great pass. I mean, obviously, like, holy cow, where's that been? And, you know, uh, uh, George walks out of there with, what, six catches for 130 yards and a touchdown yesterday. So, yeah. Um, you look, you, you, when you watch the 49ers, um, Brock Purdy is throwing to wide open dudes every single play. It's like yes. they're throwing there's they're throwing catch pitch and catch in the backyard. Meanwhile, every time Kenny goes to throw, the, there's like two or three people. It's like a it's like a James Bond movie or something like that. They're, they're, they're just they're 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 all over him and picking ha- picking <laughs> has to make this 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 superhuman catch just to, just to catch it. But yeah, right. Brock, you know, but but you know, Brock Purdy. I mean, God, I could be the quarterback of the 49ers. My goodness, but um, the, the whole Jalen Warren Najee thing. We need to address, and I love, I I love Najee. I've gone from saying screw Najee, more Jalen Warren, but after what I saw last week against Houston, where he was the only one that showed up in that whole game, and he tried to take on the whole team by himself, I have respect from the dude has heart. But the problem is, it's either the play calling or something. But Jalen Warren is just more effective. It's I I think it's I think it's yeah. also how they're being used. Every time you give it to Najee, it's the same thing. Hand off up the middle, hand off up the middle, maybe to the left, maybe to the right. With yeah. Warren, it could be anywhere. It could be it could be one way. It could be a toss. It could be a, it could be a, th- a pass. It could be anything. You know, the, he's just more versatile. Either he is more versatile and they're using Najee wrong, or Jalen Warren is just more effective in this offense. Well, and that was the thing. I mean, if you watched Alabama football at all and you watched Najee Harris, he was a very dangerous person, uh, either giving them the rock or throwing it to him. And you thought, hey, holy heck, we, we get him here with Ben at the time. Uh, this is going to be – he's going to be a beast, you know. And uh, he just – they've stopped throwing him the ball. I don't know why. It's not like uh, he's been dropping it lately. or, or He's a good like pass that. catcher. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know why they do that. Yeah, so, yeah, I, I just – I don't get it. But you're right. It's one of those things where he's just – it's probably a combination. He's not being utilized. He may not have faith in Matt Canada, so maybe he's not putting forth his best effort. Um, I just don't know, but it, it, you're right. I mean, I feel like if we, if he was sent off to the Colts or the Broncos or the Vikings, he'd be this animal. You um, put him on a team with a good o- offensive line. That dude, that dude is basically Derrick Henry. That he, dude would, he, would run for like 2000 yards a season or, or catch for fifth, 500. And yeah, I, mean, whatever. Yeah. I mean, he's, that's my fear. And it's just like, and I think that's what we got away with. And why I think a lot of people have really kind of, um, you know, come to the end with Tomlin too is now they're kind of seeing like Antonio Brown, Big Ben, you know, uh, we wasted that. We wasted the great running backs we had during that. And here we go again. You know, are we, are we ruining Kenny's beginning of his career? Uh, Najee's just not what we thought. And it's not like Najee right. sucks. We know he doesn't suck. Right. Um, you got Pickens, you got Deontay. So it's just, it's not like the Steelers have had bad players. Uh, it's just, you know, it's a matter of uh, execution and coaching, and it's just not come together at all. Neither is coming together. 
Yeah. It's just not it's just not a cohesive thing. The, the, the offense is just not it's it's just a disaster for whatever right. reason. It's just yeah. not working. And you're and right, Najee Harris is the type of guy that can go out there and take over a game. He has the athletic ability to do that. He can have yeah. 130 yards rushing and 50 yards receiving and two touchdowns or whatever, and it's just not happening. Uh, I think one thing we learned in this game is Broderick Jones is here to stay. I think Dan um, Dan Moore yep. is is done. Is the is the now? I don't know if it's Dan Moore that's going to the bench, or I don't know. It might be Chooks because Chooks ain't exactly that great either. I don't know. Yeah. You were rewinding the game yesterday, and so was I. And if you can catch this out there, I'm not sure if there's going to be. But if you look at Kenny's pass to Pickens, uh, he's tearing up the field. If you look a little bit to the left, there's this monster tearing up the field at like Mach 6. And I, I'm zoomed in. It's Broderick Jones. He's flying up the field looking to just absolutely destroy somebody. Wow. And it was like, wow, okay, you know, this is the kid we wanted. Um, and, and maybe – Maybe they were wrong about not starting him. And because uh, they're obviously, I feel they're wrong about Joey Porter Jr. You know, okay, Thank let you. this get in. Nick Bosa blows him up. Okay, he'll learn. You know, I mean, because he looked great yesterday. Uh, and I think he's kind of cemented his spot there. I think you're right. Dan Moore might come back, but I don't know if it's going to be in that spot. I get to thinking it's like, well, you don't want him to. You don't want him to get blown up by Nick Bosa. You don't want him to get it by get it blown up by Miles Garrett. You don't want him to get blown up by Max Crosby. Okay, well, those dudes are gone. Yep. No, there's nobody there's nobody on the on the Ravens that's that's that 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 uh intimidating so yeah yeah um th- yeah Dan Moore might have uh he, he might have Wally pipped himself out of out of a job but um so now what I was thinking so now it is 14 to 10 they go for the two-point conversion it fails uh which almost came back to haunt them but anyway yep. um I was thinking now there is a there was a minute 17 left. I was thinking they scored too fast. You I, you I, just I, gave yeah. Lamar a minute 17 to drive down the field and score a touchdown. There is a pretty good chance he's going to do that. I thought it was not – you never want to say – see, my my thought was – you were you were basically in in field goal range. You were at the time they were in the, the Baltimore forty one right before that that big touchdown pass. All they needed to do was like ten more yards in a minute. You 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 wear down the clock. You get in field goal range. You went. You you kick the field goal. You win eleven ten. We're done. So you make it fourteen to ten. You give them a minute seventeen left. Oh crap! Fine. Okay. But what happens? Uh, Lamar uh, throws at the Zay Flowers for 19 yards. Then at a minute two, Lamar gets sacked, stripped by uh, 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 um, Alex Highsmith, recovered by TJ Watt. And TJ Watt runs it to the Baltimore 18. Whoop de doo, game over. Here we go. And when TJ Watt would recover the fumble, he had the ball in one hand, and, and Lamar Jackson was right there. He was punching Lamar. The yeah, he was. Right like, yes. <laughs> yep. That was that's just Steeler Ravens. I think, football. I think he got a um unsportsmanlike conduct for the he did. He Yeah. Yeah, he got unsportsmanlike conduct. Yep. People did. <laughs> yep, and we loved it. We love yep. it. We love it. Yep. Okay. So we got the ball back. It's in uh, it's it's on the Baltimore 18. We're done. All we have to do is kneel on it. It's easy peasy. Did Cristobal, did the, did the Miami right. uh, University of Miami coach become like, become a consultant and say, "Hey guys, don't I don't know. Let's, let's let's screw up this kneel thing." They kneel down two times. They go to kneel down the third time because because Baltimore still had a couple timeouts. They go to kneel down a third time and they get a penalty. And when you get a penalty, the clock stops. Yep. So now. So now, with 49 seconds left, they took off, what, 13 seconds? My God! I know. You know, Basic thing that any professional team should, should know how to do. My God, people! Oh they're my very God. lucky that that, yes. or one of these days it's going to kill them. Like, maybe, maybe, a lot of these guys are right, maybe the Steelers are going to end up with a nine-win season, maybe. And that nine wins might be enough to get them in the playoffs. 
But maybe they don't. Maybe they lose that one or key game because of something like that. Uh, yeah. And I just, you know, us diehard Steel fans, this it's not that has been a thorn in our side since Mike Tomlin was taken over from the get go. I don't think he's ever done that. I don't think he's ever understood it. Um, I I don't know. You saw it with Hackett last year when he was in the Broncos, and uh, the fans started uh, ringing bells when it was. And before that, you know, I mean, yeah. that was phenomenal to, to let him know that, you know, how many timeouts he had left or, you know, I mean, yeah. I, I just, it's easy yeah, for it's you and not I to just, say, Joe, but you're right. It, it's it's, it's not just Tomlin. There's a lot of coaches that mess up time yep. management, <laughs> but um, that's the same thing. Just get a time management consultant. You, Something. Byron Leftwich. Maybe he he knows how to do that. I, I don't know. I mean, my goodness. So, I mean, they, they almost, they're up. Okay, so they kick the field goal. They're up 17 to 10. Again, again, Baltimore gets the 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 um the ball with 49 seconds left. That's plenty of time to go down the field. Luckily, the, the defense bails them out again, and they, they go down on downs. But, my goodness, it should have never come to that. Probably not. I, I'll give credit where it's due, though. The Steelers' defense, you're right. Um, you give Lamar Jackson an amount of time, it's a good chance he, he can get the field. But uh, they really have his number. You know, Allison said that last week on the podcast. And she said it, and I, I didn't dismiss it, but I thought, well, how bad has he been? But now he's one in six lifetime. Uh, or I think it's one in three lifetime against the Steelers. And which is oh, weird, right. which is weird because he's been with them for what five, six years now, and I he's only so. faced them four times. Right. Right. Because he's been injured or anything. Yeah. Uh, he was 22 for 38. Not a great day yesterday. Um, the run game was was held in check. I mean, I know they had about 120, 125 yards as a team rushing, but not one of the three backs really had much more than 40 yards. Um, but yeah, you know, they, they did a good job it, when you're right. They probably shouldn't have been put in that position. But time and time again with this defense, they are put in that position and they came away great. You know, I mean, a big reason we won that game, if not, like you said, the sole reason we won that game yesterday. Uh, although they they got to they got to get better in their coverage, Joe, because I mean, and that's that's why it's not. I'm not just sitting there with my blue and white Penn State pom pom saying he's a Penn State guy. He's got to play. No, it's they need help in the defensive backfield. I don't care if Joey Porter Jr. played at Pitt or, or Tennessee or Arkansas. He's obviously a kid that needs to be in there because you need some help. Because like you said, right from the get go. All those drop passes, uh, there were eight. Let's say the Ravens catch four of them, and one of them in the end zone of the two that did drop the end zone. Oh, this is a loss. Score. This is it's, it's, a, it's a different score. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and there, I mean, Zay Flowers was wide open on at least two of those. I mean, one he walks in the end zone, right? Wide open, and like you right. said, to your point, a really good one is that every time Pickett throws, you've got you know a meeting of the minds at the forty yard line, and he's got three guys on him, or or whatever, or or if he does, I mean, it's just. For God's sakes, I'd love to see just an open wide receiver. Yeah, you know, but um, this this was never the plan with the cornerbacks. Then this was never the plan that Levi Wallace would be one cornerback and Patrick Peterson would be the other. No, the plan was Porter one cornerback, Levi Wallace the other, and Patrick Peterson would be slot corner, safety, some nickelback, something, something where he wouldn't be exposed as a, as an outside corner. What the heck are we doing? This is ridiculous. Joey yes. Porter Jr. Has, has proved himself time and again. Stop it with this crap. Come on. Yeah, and I told you that last. I told you and the girls that last week. I said, Zay Flowers is going to. I hope A, he's on my fantasy team. So I was kind of hoping a little bit. You know, it's one of those things where, again, you kind of hope, but as long as they lose. Um, but I mean, he kept dropping passes and they're damn lucky because Peterson couldn't keep up with him. And How I'm funny. Sitting there like, Why don't they have JPJ out there? He's fast. Yeah. I'm not saying yeah. he's going to be 100% times better, but, oh, you know what? When he was in there and he took uh, took the out route instead of the inside route, which is a smart play, he didn't bite on it. He picked, turns around and gets an interception. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the um, the the running back for the uh, for for Jacksonville, Travis Etienne, he had a huge day when they when they played in London, and he he tweeted, um, "I played against myself in fantasy football." <laughs> Talk about hurting yourself. You didn't draft yourself? Seriously, wow. how can you not draft yourself? I don't yeah, care. If like, you make yourself me. a first-round pick, dude. Come on. Like, what do you say? I mean, how does that work? Do you seriously say, well, 
I don't draft myself, but maybe I'll fall Who's to myself. Who's the jerk? Who's the jerk that has Travis Etienne in his in their fantasy football league? And don't let tra- oh, don't let the dude draft himself. <laughs> like, come on, let him have himself. Come Absolutely, on. I'll trade you for you. Seriously, um, can can we? That can would we be make so it? much fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's um, that's so funny. You know, and again, we here we here we sit three and two, go to the bye week which five weeks ago you and I were both kind of saying that's probably what they'll be. And I'd feel good about it. Um, <laughs> it's, but you know, they've been outscored by 31 points. They've been outgained by 632 yards to this point. And yet they're three and two heading into bye week against the Rams team. That is a decent Rams team. Um, I, I don't think, you know, we're going to blow their doors off, but I think we have a chance. It's going to be a very interesting game, and honestly, what after what happened with Houston, we have no. I, I'm you know I'm not going to say oh they're they're a lesser team, so obviously the Steelers are going to roll them. Steelers aren't rolling anybody. They're they're you know I mean they should have killed the Raiders, and they only won that by five. So, uh, you know who knows who knows what's going to happen, but that's two weeks from now. We got they they got a lot to work on in those two weeks. Now, last year their bye week was I believe after week eight. And that that at that time they were an absolute disaster. They were two and six. They were getting blown out. Everything was a disaster. After the bye, they looked a lot better. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see what happens this time. Hopefully they they take some time to re-examine everything. Um, yeah. I, I I really I, think what needs to happen is the same thing that happened last year was probably, you know. They need to simplify the offense. And yes, getting Deontay back will, will help a lot. And hopefully uh Firemouth is, isn't bad either. But they need to simplify this offense and they just need to get something working. What at whatever it is, the run, the pass, yeah. something working, because it just can't. This is not sustainable. It's amazing that they're three and two. But that but the, the the Browns game and this game were just flukes that they should have lost. And it's amazing yeah. that they won. And, and the credit to them, you know, a win is a win. But that is not sustainable. You cannot rely on a horrible offense and an awesome defense every single week. Because because no. get no. this, there are offenses, there are teams out there that score more than two touchdowns in a, in a uh, game. Yeah. The then, what, then what are you going to do? Good in the first week, you know, and I, I don't know if anyone's going to stop the 49ers. I mean, I don't think they're going to go undefeated. It's just too tough of a league, but. They look um, amazing. Yeah. They look, they look, yeah. They you, look know, who, you know who looks good? And, and you and I were both not necessarily against it. We we're kind of questioning it. The Lions, the Lions are kind of doing what you're saying right now, right? The defense has been pretty solid for Detroit. And that offense wins games. That offense doesn't blow your doors off. But, you know, it's a, it's a good enough. Jared Goff does not turn the ball over. I, I mean, you can say what you want about him. He doesn't turn it over. They get down, they score points, um, you know, and, uh, and they're four and one. Uh, and that's all we're asking, guys. I mean, you don't need – they don't need – these guys don't need to be the 49ers. But if you can get down there and, and if, the, if, the, if the Steelers are scoring, let's say, 24 points a game, maybe one more touchdown or 28 points a game, we're sitting pretty. They I mean, we, they we, will we, win a lot of games if they score 20. And, and, and that's, that's league team. average. We're not asking for, right. you know, the greatest show on turf. We're just asking yeah. for league average scoring. Right. You got a great field goal kicker. You got a lot of good things, but I, I don't know. Let's see what you're right. Let's see what happens with the bye week. Traditionally, they've done pretty well after a bye week, although this one's one of the earliest they've ever had. Um, you know, after they spread out these bye weeks, I always really like it when it's late in the season. I really feel up. Yeah. Up. Yeah. But I kind of like it because they need to hopefully <laughs> by the time they get back, Deontay will be back, which will help. I don't um, think Cam Hayward will be back. I don't think I, I think you know, he's still like Harland is supposed to be back now. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. You know, he's, um, he's, he's missed. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it, it gives him a chance to, to lick their wounds a little bit. Get ready because. You're right. That schedule, you said it last week, and, and the schedule gets a little bit tougher here. Um, I, I do want to say now, you know, these these AFC North teams are, are, are crucial wins, but, boy, the AFC North looks a lot more mediocre than I thought they would. Yeah. I don't think the Ravens are that good. I don't think the Browns are that good. Uh, I don't think the Bengals are that good, although they looked – Decent They're gonna solid. get there. Is is if if Joey Burrow is is right again, if he's healthy again, they're gonna take off. They're gonna they're yeah. they're gonna rattle off wins like crazy if 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 he's okay. But yeah, we thought Baltimore would be really good. They're okay. 
yes, they should have right. won this game, but still, Cleveland, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know about yeah. them. Um, so yeah, this is this is definitely this is definitely a, a, a winnable division. And uh, you know, if they just get a little better on offense, they could they could make the playoffs. They could. Uh, and that's, that's just the thing. And I, I think that's the frustration too. It's, I think most Yinzers are intelligent enough to know you're right. This isn't the greatest show on turf. Um, we don't expect this to be the, the mid nineties Cowboys or, you know, the 84 dolphins or whatever. Uh, but we just want to see a couple more touchdowns in a game. Like, like the Najee thing that you and I kind of went off on uh, Najee take over a game, Wh- whatever it takes, you know, uh, you saw Kittles had three touchdowns last night um, against, against the Cowboys. Man, I'd love to have Fryermuth grab two or or Darnell Washington one or having DJ Johnson or Deontay Johnson have a three touchdown game. I mean, anything like that. Kenny Pickett throws one, runs one in, whatever. We they just, just they it's just, like, they just need something. They just need something yeah. they could they could count on. Um, yep. you know, a, a hundred yard uh rushing game from Najee, a you know, two touchdown game from Muth, something where that they could that they could say, okay, nothing's working. Let's go to this, and that, and it's not. It's just this offense is such a struggle now, and that's something they yep. really need to work on. So, and if you look at next week's schedule, Joe, Baltimore's at Tennessee. It's not an easy win for them. Uh, you have the the Browns have the 49ers. Uh, I hate to tell you, Cleveland, oh, that's an automatic loss. Winning. Sorry, cl- sorry, Cleveland. You're you're, you're not winning, and, and the Bengals have a very strong Seattle team coming in. So, uh, you know, in the thing about Joe Burrow is it's very evident. Uh, he is not mobile. I mean, he is he is not mobile at all. And I I think that calf injury is still worse than what they're saying. And if he he takes a couple of licks, that that Seattle team is going to lay it to him. So you could have all three of those teams lose next week, and then boy. You know, you could be sitting pretty. It's it's very interesting. It's very interesting. <laughs> so we'll see. Uh, but uh, it's just it's 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 just amazing. It's amazing that they're three and two and leading the division going into the bye. It's it's a wonderful thing. It's it's just so crazy. I that was the most unexpected win ever. That was like the most the the most Steelers Ravens game ever. And yeah. If if I'm a, if I'm a Baltimore fan, I'm just I I'm just just so angry. I've I've seen some of them. They're like, oh, you think you're good or something like those Steelers? It's like, no, we know we we know we're not good, though, dude. Yeah, right. We don't don't <laughs> nobody nobody's more critical of a Steelers uh, team than the Steelers fans. So so right. don't worry about that. Don't yeah, we I don't know what we are. Winning that game, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, and you know I I'd have to go back and look, but now they're. We've won six out of the last seven games. I don't know if we did that even during Big Ben's days. I mean, it was always, you know, I mean, we would go two and three, then we'd win like three and then lose four or lose two yeah. out of the next three, whatever. I mean, we've been pretty good against them lately. So I don't know. Yep. We shall see. All right. Bye. Week. All right. Well, I will uh I'll talk to you next week and we'll I don't know what we'll talk about. We'll, 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 I'm sure, I'm sure something will come up. We'll probably, somebody will, somebody will probably like have, just have a camera right on Matt Canada the, the whole week. And it's like, oh, oh, he's, look how he's filling up gas. He does, has no reaction. Right. He didn't use his giant eagle points. What's wrong with him? He didn't even use his fuel perks. Oh my God. What an idiot. <laughs> he didn't know how to use his fuel perks. Oh. <laughs> that would be bad. That would yep. be bad. <laughs> All right. <laughs> He ordered his fries and his slaw on the side of Primanti's. Oh my goodness! Oh Get my goodness! <laughs> I knew, I knew somebody. Her, uh, a, a friend had her. Uh, her husband loved, absolutely loved Primanti's, and she hated it. So when she would go there, she'd say, um, "I'll have a sandwich, uh, fries and slaws on, on the side." And they looked at her like, "What the hell are you even doing here? What are you? <laughs> you're doing this wrong." Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. All right. All right I'll, I'll see you. See ya.